liftoff. We have liftoff at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Apollo 9, David Scott, Rusty Schweiker, and Jim McDivitt. Their mission, test fly the lunar module, the LEMP, in Earth orbit. Nine was the first time we ever put two crewmen in a spacecraft that couldn't re-enter into the Earth's atmosphere. Only nine months before the end of the decade, there is one final test before NASA can attempt to land on the moon. You know, Apollo 10 was the, uh, only the second flight of the lunar module ever, and we were going to take it to the moon. Uh, the Apollo 10 was a total dress rehearsal for the first lunar landing with the exception of the landing itself. The astronauts then sat down to breakfast. They had a menu of filet mignon, scrambled eggs, toast, coffee, and tea. This is Apollo 9's control. We're still aiming toward our planned liftoff at the start of the lunar window, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. All the flights uh, can be looked at as a dangerous endeavor. You're flying machines, and machines break. Nobody, you know, wrung their hands about, oh my God, why am I doing this? I mean, look at this thing. All this thing can go wrong, and all this thing can break, and it's crazy. Let's don't do it. But I mean, everybody's standing in line. Let's go. If you don't want to go, I'll go. This is Apollo launch control, T-minus three hours, four minutes, 32 seconds, and counting. Right on time as far as the astronaut countdown is concerned, the prime crew now departing from their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. The transfer van now departing on the start of its eight-mile trip to launch pad A here at Complex 39. Right now, our count at three hours, three minutes, and counting. Well, my position in the launch was going to be in the center, with Neil on the left in the commander's position and Mike Collins on the right. But that meant that I would be the last one to be put into the spacecraft. Astronaut Edwin Aldrin will stand by in the elevator, seated in a chair, while his two comrades first board the spacecraft. So I had my little air conditioning unit all by myself, and I could look out and see the sun beginning to come up and I could sort of see the evidence of people out there gathered to watch. I could see them, and they couldn't quite see me, I guess. Once Armstrong and Collins are aboard, then Aldrin will be called, and he will uh, take the middle seat in the spacecraft. This was a, a lonely situation. Here I am on the outside of this rocket. We're going to be on the inside pretty soon, and we're not going to see the outside <laughs> again anymore if, if things go, go right. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. The swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues. Firing command coming in now. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. a difficult landing site in the moon's Framoro Hills. You know, when you're an astronaut, you've got to buy in to a lot of risk. Nobody's going to save you if the hardware doesn't work. You buy into that stuff if you're going to be an astronaut. If you can't buy into it, don't be an astronaut. T-minus 25 seconds and counting, and Apollo 13 is go. You know, you're sort of relaxed because there's only two things that are going to happen. Either it's going to go as planned or something is going to go wrong. This was my last chance to get to the moon. Mission sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have liftoff at 
Apollo 13 is just the eighth launch of the most powerful rocket ever built. Apollo 17 targets another geologically rich area of the moon. But this will be Project Apollo's final lunar landing. Budget cuts force NASA to scrub three more missions already scheduled. We were disappointed because they canceled 18, 19, and 20. We had the hardware. We had crews picked. And uh, all it was was operational uh, money. NASA wants the last moon mission to be their greatest. The landing site demands the first night launch of the giant Saturn V rocket. On board, Ron Evans is command module pilot. Harrison Schmidt is NASA's first scientist in space. And the commander of Apollo 17 is Gene Cernan, a veteran of Gemini 9 and Apollo 10. Apollo 17 was, uh, was a real goal of mine. I knew before we launched that Apollo 17 was going to be the last flight to the moon, and I knew I would, I would be the guy to make the final steps on the moon. There are a lot of people, a lot of people, I think, in positions of responsibility within NASA who, being the last flight, just wanted me to get back alive. More than half a million people come from all over the world to watch the final lunar launch. Roger, we're go for lift off here, Capcom. I knew I wasn't going to be coming this way again. And I just wanted to stop time. I wanted to freeze time. I want to take advantage of this moment. Okay, one minute, Houston. We're 50 seconds now, and we're go. I hear you. Looking good here. It's only 11 years since Alan Shepard became the first American in space, and sure. John Kennedy okay. challenged the US to go to the moon. Now, Apollo 17 is the end of an era. It's like uh, breaking off a love affair. Ah, uh, you've had a marvelous time, and, uh, but now it's time to bring that relationship to an end. Three, two, one, ignition. Right away, Houston. Thanks for good. Thanks, God. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good Skylab and crew will launch on separate rockets. This beautiful big Saturn V with the workshop on it was to launch on May 14th, and it would get into the, uh, the correct orbit, and the next day we would launch. Not since Gemini 6 and 7 has NASA attempted two launches so close together. Unmanned Skylab flies first. The Skylab lifting off the pad now, moving up. Skylab has cleared the tower. 
look like a great launch. Went right up into the sky as far as we could see it and was on its way successfully. After a 10-day delay, Kerwin, Conrad, and Weitz finally launch NASA's first repairman in space. T-minus seven, six, five, four, three. Engine sequence start. Two, one, zero. We have launch commit and we have liftoff. The clock is running and Skylab has cleared the tower.